Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Keynes Technology Limited Q1 FY25 conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on a touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Niruddha Joshi from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Aditya. On behalf of ICICI Securities, we welcome you all to Q1 FY25 Results Conference Call of Keynes Technology India. We have with us senior management represented by Mr. Ramesh Kannan, founder and managing director, Mrs. Savita Ramesh, chairperson, Mr. Jairam Sampat, full time director and chief financial officer and Mr. Rajesh Sharma, Chief Executive Officer. Now I hand over the call to Mr. Ramesh Kannan for his initial comments on the quarterly performance. Then uh, Mr. Jairam Sampat will uh, take over and then we will open the floor for question and uh, answer session. Thanks and over to you, sir. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Kings Technology team, I would like to welcome everyone to the earnings call for quarter one, 2025. I have along with me, Sadita Ramesh, chairperson of our board, Jairam Sampat, full-time director and CFO, Rajesh Sharma, CEO, and our investor relation partners in the call. We are pleased to share our growth as a company and achievements for the quarter. I am happy to inform you that we have been able to achieve a revenue of 5,040 million during the quarter one FY25, which represents a strong growth of 70% year on year. The operational EBITDA margin excluding other income for the quarter 25 was at 13.3 and fat margin was at 10.1 percent our order book surged from rupees 41,152 million in quarter 4 fy 24 to rupees 50,386 million in quarter 1 fy 25 Order book grew sequentially by 22% during the quarter compared to last quarter, representing substantial increase in monthly order inflow. Growth in order book is led by strong demand across all verticals, more notably industrial and EV, aerospace, outer space and strategic electronics along with railway segment. Specifically, the aerospace, outer space, and strategic medical electronics vertical, we have secured a sizable customer that will significantly increase our overall revenue portfolio in the upcoming year. From a business standpoint, we have continuously endeavored to enhance our organization and transforming into an integrated EMS company, meeting a larger portion of the needs of our clients. Our Telangana facility is almost ready and will be active very soon in order to achieve this goal in the area of smart meters. As we move ahead, in Atmanibar Bharat, initiative by government, we are working, getting more on the traction in railways on board electronics, train pollution avoidance system. We are making significant investment in developmental activities in this area through leading technology providers. Going forward into the future, this will further augment our valuable 
portfolio of business along with our other strategic initiatives by government of india in rail safety we are very optimistic going forward for our revenue growth expanding into other vertic key verticals and will not only improve top line but augment the bottom line as well for the financial year 2025 going ahead we expect to have a good traction from all the different verticals and we'll meet and exceed our estimates of 30000 million of revenue and corresponding ebitda margin targeting at 15% for fy25 kings is constantly seeking to stay up to date with the newest technology advancements hence eager to invest in or collaborate with such businesses we can better serve our current customer base and attract new important clients in india and abroad by maintaining our focus on vertical competency and implementing a continuous improvement plan in quality delivery and automation we are in the final stage of obtaining government approvals for our new investment and expect the approval soon now the new government is informed and budget has already announced we have acquired land in the state of gujarat which will be starting our construction shortly meanwhile we also activated the collaboration and the team formation on onboarding is happening parallelly for our osad business we expect a positive response in the osad business in fy26 as far as our approval is concerned it is in the final stage and is expected at any moment regarding the hbi printed circuit board project we are proceeding as per plan having set up the team we are in the final stages of land acquisition and is indicated as indicated earlier we expect to post revenues in printed circuit board business in fy26 we believe that as we take the final steps towards barbos pcb and osat it will help us become a truly integrated electronics company this is only possible because of the hard work and dedication of our entire team and i want to take a moment to express my sincere gratitude for their contribution i would like to sincerely thank each and every one of our excellent investors for their encouragement so far in our journey and expect continuing support in the future too thank you once again and we look forward to an exciting time ahead i will now hand over the call to jairam sambath to take you through our financial performance thank you over to you jairam uh thank you uh, ramesh ji uh, thank you all for joining the call today um, and as we start the new fiscal year i'm happy to share king technologies financial results for the period ending q1 uh, 2025 and share with you the highlights of the same for the first quarter uh, of uh, 2025 consolidated total revenues were at uh, 5040 million rupees uh, representing a 70% year on year growth the consolidated capita for the quarter was uh, 699 million inr showing the 66% year on year increase the debita margin for the quarter excluding the other income was at about 13.3% our consolidated profit after tax for the quarter was inr 508 million up by about 106% uh, and the pat margin for the quarter stood at about 10.1% our current order book which stands now at uh, 50386 million that's about 538 crore uh, indian rupees the net net working capital at the end of the june quarter was at about uh, 121 days which is similar to the previous 
year same quarter. However, our inventories were uh, higher on an absolute basis as we to make advanced purchases keeping in mind requirements of the upcoming quarter as we plan to execute revenues in excess of uh, INR 30,000 uh, million in FY25. Uh, there were uh, temporary pressure from receivables too with a few customers. We expect this to improve in the coming quarters. We have planned the networking capital to come back uh, to the expected lines as we progress during the year and will reduce significantly on an average by the end of the year on a year-on-year -year basis. Consequently, our net debt at the end of the quarter adjusted for unutilized proceeds was at um, INR 5,771 million compared to INR 972 million at the end of the June quarter uh, of FI24. Our ROE and ROC stood at about 17.4% and 18.8% uh, respectively for Q2025. We continue to make uh, sustained progress on our expansion and continuously adding new lines across various facilities, especially Chamraj Nagar, to line with uh, it to make us a truly integrated facility for EMS. Also, our Telangana facility first phase will be up and running by the end of August 2024. In the new project area, the OSAT as well as HDI PC board manufacturing, we are likely to start posting revenues by the FI26. Uh, the requisite government approvals are expected at any time now since the new government has taken over and the budget is presented. Uh, we will keep all posted on the key developments as we move ahead in the year. We have also received tremendous support from you all and hope to uh, uh, have the same kind of support uh, going forward into the future. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, ICIC Security for helping us to arrange this earnings call. With this, I request all participants to come in with their questions, and I now open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Bhumika Nair from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, good morning, sir, and congratulations for a good set of numbers. Um, so just wanted to first understand this, uh, you know, 55% acquisition in Austria. If you can just talk about what is it exactly, what are the revenues, what is the investment for this uh, thing, if you can just elaborate a little bit about that. Yeah, good morning, Gavindaji. Thank you for uh, attending this call on a Saturday. Unfortunately, we didn't have any other time to do this. Anyway, I thank all the other participants also to take time of their personal time and do this. Uh, so we, uh, uh, we have just taken a board approval for proceeding with the project. And uh, some more details are being worked out, and at appropriate time, we'll announce this uh, uh, details. Uh, it's going to be a significant project, uh, but beyond that, uh, uh, we would come back to you once uh, all the integrities are worked out, Dhanitaji. Uh, Sure. So the other thing is, you know, we saw a very strong uptick in terms of the order intake. And you said that, you know, there was uh, decent uh, orders that came in from outer space, strategic uh, medical customers, etc. Um, can we get some more light? I mean, you know, is this like a multi-year contract? How large are the orders uh, from, you know, some more uh, details on this will really help us understand uh, how things are moving and, you know, whether this kind of order intake that we've seen in the current quarter can continue as well going ahead. So some color on this, what is the execution timeline, etc. cetera. Uh, sure, Gumigati. See, firstly, uh, the order uh, uh, comes in chunks, as, as we have discussed earlier too. So when, when a large order comes in, obviously the average order inflow per month goes up uh, tag, much higher than what we actually execute and so on. So uh, typically we have brought in uh, two major, three major areas the order inflow. One is of course, as you correctly pointed out, aerospace, outer space, and defense. The second uh, is the industrial area, industrial and EV area. The third is medical area. And these are multi-year contracts. So obviously these orders, some of the orders, not all of them, but some of them exceed um, um, probably reach up to about 20, uh, for the next five years too. So like for instance in aerospace and other areas. So uh, and uh, these. Uh, uh, going forward, uh, the order of the day will be, yes, every uh, once in a few quarters, we'll have large increases when the 
the customers commit large amounts of business and typically in the kind of segments that we work in the horizon as i have explained earlier is longer than let's say one year and so on and so forth so in any any particular order book i'm happy to tell you that this order book probably will suffice for our execution this year almost there are a few more orders we are expecting so obviously that will exceed the kind of targets that we have set for ourselves so let's see how to manage that so the horizon of the order is longer uh, uh, and is getting uh, uh, increased uh, day by day and so that's a good news uh, so the order book uh, uh, will keep growing uh, at similar pace uh, and you can expect some uh, uh, a reasonable after execution of all the orders etc we can expect some more increase in the order book at the end of the year So, sir, of this five thousand crores, what is the split of a large, uh, longer duration, multi-year kind of uh, thing? What would be the quantum of the order book in that? Yeah. So, uh, no, yeah, I think the, the, the question you are asking is the uh, are there so so we we have received an order for a, a two-year time frame for one of the industrial products. I am not at liberty to tell you exactly what that product is at this point in time. but uh, suffice it to say that this is uh, uh, significantly let's say uh, this constitutes about 10% of the order book uh, where the execution is expected to be let's say one year later than uh, today so within next one year uh, about uh, 10% and another 10% uh, will uh, get executed uh, later than one year in a time frame of two years so so what that, normally we do is whatever we present here we don't give you more than 2 years but 70% of our orders we have a window period of 4 to 6 years of life that means the contract will be either first year to 4 year it will ramp up on the second year onwards and then it tapers down otherwise it is around 6 6 and a half years absolutely and this is a So my second question is on the OSANT business. Um, you know, we are expecting approvals any time we've identified the land in Gujarat, etc. If you can also talk about, you know, how is the progress of the customers? How our relationships with, you know, Globetronic, Aptos, etc. is kind of moving on, and what is their uh, response to some bit of a delay that we've seen? Um, you know, how is the work progressing with them? Yeah. so we have also used the time intervening time as you know during the last one quarter plus a few months was um, there during the election time etc so so we have used the intervening time to strengthen our relationship with the collaborators and also do a little more in terms of augmenting the team with cto operations heads and so on and so forth we also got some more customers in the advanced packaging area so Uh, the idea is to make sure that we use all the time to develop a good business portfolio in this area, so that once the machines are in place, we do get a good quality of business too. So it's uh, it's been used by the team this intervening time period. It's been used by the team to augment the relationship with the customers, etc. And uh, that part of it is going well, and as expected. And we, I think, FI 26 end quarter, that is the fourth quarter of FI 26, we certainly will have. Uh, reasonable and reasonably significant capacity utilization and revenue. Okay, sir. I'll have more questions. I'll come back in the questions. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vin Tagi. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Heaven Does Pub. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks a lot for taking my question and congrats on a very good set of numbers once again. Uh, my first question is with respect to the industrial segment. uh just wanted to get a sense as to how uh, the mix is there in the industrial business with respect to uh, smart meters and other uh, products and uh, what kind of growth that we can think of with respect to uh, this particular category over the next 2 to 3 years where does visibility come from in terms of growth across various sub product categories in this space thank you thank you ravi for uh... joining the call and uh, this very important question that you have asked so see industrial sector is right now happening sector due to certain product industrial in ev you take uh, lots of happening the uh, orders are there one of course is smart meter both domestic uh, domestic business as well as international business so we have some excellent clients uh, acquired in both the areas and currently what we have posted is order is for the domestic segment but we are also likely to get some export orders in this 
area which is significant in nature so over the next uh, let's say 2 to 5 year time frame we expect uh, probably a, a tad higher or almost a similar growth rate as the company's level uh, as an overall the thing i would say that all the verticals seem to be growing similarly to the company's number obviously industrial may be growing a little higher you know, higher and something else may be training a little bit but uh, we are broadly at the same uh, level of growth rate so we see the same bull- bullishness across the uh, categories all the different vertical categories so this, that's why we get a confidence that we will be able to kind of manage the portfolio profitability properly so what happens in each uh, as you know these as the quarters go from first to second third and fourth the amount of sales that is done is also like uh, in a ratio of 1 to 3 4 kind of number Uh, based on last uh, uh, several years uh, study uh, and uh, so there would be in some quarters some, some orders will get uh, on boarded and so on so that sector may look a little higher in terms of you know execution and all that but uh, but broadly uh, like last year's numbers uh, similar percentages we expect in effect maybe a little more exports we can uh, probably factor by the end of the year understood sir and uh, my second question is with respect to the medical uh, equipment business uh, so that particular segment had been a bit of soft uh, over the past couple of years in terms of growth and this quarter you had talked about uh, one contract coming from the medical side uh, even competitors like uh, sirma etc they hadn't reported good numbers uh, beyond the point after acquiring the uh, one company uh so uh, why is it that uh, this particular segment is not going as fast as the other segments uh, we understand that i think it carries better margins etc how is the outlook for this particular category yeah so uh, while i cannot really comment on uh, business of other companies obviously they are working with some strategy which i am not really privy to but but as a generic comment our uh, increase in uh, order book uh, in medical area is for exports Uh, okay. and uh, we know it's a difficult area to work because we have been in the sector for more than two decades and uh, so it takes a long time for reputation to build and people to test uh, you know try you with your orders but i'm very happy to tell you that one of the world's leading medical uh, equipment providers has qualified us both in europe as well as in the us uh, business so we can expect now that to uh, pull uh, pull up the percentage of medical business Uh, but uh, uh, on the other hand i would also like to point out that these are extremely high tech and high critical and um, um, highly complex equipment and so uh, um, it is not very really easy to ramp up um, these businesses uh, as the customers do take a long time before they finalize so we are happy to tell you that we have now onboarded a very large customer so i uh, think for some time we will start growing the business and uh, delivering to that customers required Understood, sir. Uh, thanks a lot, and once again, congrats on a very good set of numbers. Yeah. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants: please limit your question to two per participant. Should have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. Our next question is from the line of Deepak Krishnan from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead, sir. Hi sir, uh, I hope I am audible. I just wanted to sort of understand. We've given a guidance of fifteen percent for EBITDA margin, and you know, one two we are sort of flat on flat. Is this a large part of increase driven by you know ramp up in aerospace, medical, and those segments? Because at the beginning of the year, you had indicated that these segments the percentage share may go up by two hundred, three hundred basis points in the overall mix. Is that understanding correct? Is it leverage and mix that will sort of get us to fifteen percent EBITDA margin by year end? Yes, the understanding is correct. The mix, especially in industrial uh, as well as the aerospace, uh, auto space, and uh, strategic electronics, that will also drive um, more margins positively. Of course, we don't really talk about margins by sector, but yes, the mix will favorably change is what we expect. And this is based on our understanding uh, of quality orders that we have received. Uh, sure, sir. And maybe just wanted to sort of understand. I think uh, you know, Mr. Kannan also sort of indicated something on the covered system as well as the progress over there. In terms of our end customer, you know, is this RDSA approval already there in place? And in terms of execution, when are we sort of expecting covered to pick up? Do we have anything in orders already, or we sort of expect that to come through? 
Uh, maybe just one final point. Uh, you know, it's expected. You know, how much of the overall cover spend is the content content that you kind of contribute? Because it's expected that the overall cover system is about five million per kilometer route kilometer. So how much of that is uh, you know what Kane does? Regarding Kavach, we are only investing in anticipation of order. India is going to have huge numbers. So, and our relationship with the Tier 1 rail suppliers are also good. So, we feel we can get into this business. Using that and keeping that in mind, we are investing this. We will be investing around 40 crores of in R&D investment into this project. Proof of concept is what we are being done now, and uh, this should be in the market by first quarter of 25, 26. Uh, sure, sir. Those are all my questions, and best of luck for future projects. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rahul Garje from Health and Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for yet another strong uh, quarter. Now, you know, I think my question is continuing with the earlier question on the margin. Now, I didn't see that the industrial and auto had materially increased in the, in the first quarter. Uh, also, the share of box build was lower. So I want you to understand specific reasons for why the margin was slightly lower in the first quarter, uh, and also the blended margin of the order book that you have. You know that will be helpful. Also, in the, the existing order book of over 5,000 crores. How much of that is uh, coming from box build and export? I think that's the first question. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, you see the first quarter, if you notice, it is almost a quote-unquote an election quarter, actually. And um, mm -hmm. we are glad that we got to where we actually reached, because it, uh, obviously the order book is there, but still we, we take off some of the products which uh, end customer is people like railways and other uh, governmental agencies. The inspection was not being done and so on and so forth. So, it, it, yeah, employees were on election duty and all that. You know the whole... Uh, system uh, kind of comes to a standstill okay. on the government side. So that was one reason. So there is a mixed variance, obviously. And within the sectors also, see, uh, like for instance, within the different verticals, there is different margin. Some are higher, some are lower. So within the verticals also, there are some products that are higher margin and lower margin. So it so happened that the borders that we executed, there are those where margins are a tad lower. But uh, we have done, a, our the operating team has done an excellent uh, cost control job to make sure that we didn't... Uh, we kind of uh, did some austerity measures to make sure that our data was um, still maintained. Going forward, the leverage will be available better because, uh, as you know, the uh, sales will increase. You know, first quarter generally is 14, 16 percent of the total year. Second quarter will be 25 years, so you 25 percent. So you will start getting some good uh, leverage going forward, and I think uh, so. One one is the better mix, which will drive gross margin, and then better leverage will drive even, even better data. So we are confident that this. Is a transient phenomenon, uh, and uh, so we think that uh, we'll be past this in the second quarter end. At least we'll definitely be better off. And box build and export share in the book. Yeah. So the box build, uh, for instance, if you take the medical electronics, for instance, the new orders are coming in box build. So box build is a little uh, longer term in terms of uh, development and you know approvals and all that. So you can see some increase in box build by the end of the year, especially in certain industrial as well as uh, medical. We are going to have some more share of box build. By end of the year, you will have box build share going up, and uh, rightly, as rightly pointed out, it drives also the margins a little higher. Okay. So my second question is, you know, uh, actually, you know, the export also, maybe you could just touch upon how much was export in the uh, order book. And, uh, you know, given that... Uh, you know, we are probably in the final leg of, uh, you know, the OSAT approval, etc. I want to understand, you know, how many people will you need to run this operation that peak? And, you know, do you see an uh, issue of, uh, you know, skilled manpower? Sure. Uh, so, so, firstly, on the export uh, order book, 
See, typically, currently, we export uh, portion is exactly similar to what we actually do, which is around 15% kind of number. But going okay. forward, like I said, in industrial area and some other areas like medical, we, we, and also aerospace, we'll have more export orders coming in. So uh, let's say in the longer term, I mean, a little longer than this year's uh, this thing, we can see exports climbing up from 15 to about 20% or so by FI26, 20, 25% 20, kind of time number. Now, as far as the OFAC is concerned, uh, typically based on what my studies about the other companies, et cetera, uh, an employee, uh, let's just sales per employee um, hovers around, let's say, 1.15 to 1.35 crore per annum. So that's the kind of number you can take as, uh, so if I, if we plan for, let's say, eventually uh, with this CapEx, we plan for, let's we just assume that we do a 3,000 crore, then maybe the number of employees will be a tad lower than that, just about, let's say, 15% lower than that, you know. So that's the kind of employee intensity. Um, but however, it's, uh, while it's, it's just, uh, by definition, not a labor intensive job, but it's very people dependent. That means highly skilled manpower is required. So, so from that perspective, I think uh, in India we do have an edge, provided we overcome the uh, problems of all these e e ecosystem related uh, uh, the thing which Gromit is actually helping. So I think uh, you will see the competitive advantage building in the OSAD business uh, uh, shortly, maybe in a matter of a couple of years' time. India also will become a reasonably good uh, source for this. So, uh, thank you very much, and all the very best. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Hardik Rawat from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations team on another set of strong results. Uh, while all my segment related questions have broadly been answered, I wanted to understand that we had uh, in, in the 4Q call, we had given a guidance for uh, 70 to 72 days of uh, NWC cycle. Uh, the current NWC cycle has come in flat at about 120 days. So are we retaining that guidance? Well, I understand that uh, this was an election uh, quarter uh, which is why the intensity could have been higher, but could you just touch upon uh, as to what's our uh, guidance for FI25 in terms of NWC cycle? Yeah, so while uh, I'd not like to say guidance, but last year we did about 83 days of networking capital average for the year. So it will be uh, superior to that for this year. See, the first quarter is always a bit of a problem to defend the networking capital for the simple reason that first quarter is the time when we accumulate a lot of inventories for the future orders, and this particular quarter, was a quarter where the election uh, happened. And uh, so because of this reason, uh, uh, I mean, election happened, of course, the previous quarter, but uh, I would say you know, during this quarter, we had the election as well as results coming in, et cetera. So, so that has kind of uh, disturbed the offtake a little bit. Uh, so what happens in if the, the offtake gets disturbed, inventories pile up and a little bit of receivers go up, and that uh, basically affects the networking. So we did take some counteraction, and we tried to kind of make sure that we don't uh, on up too much of inventory, etc. Still, we got to where we are. I am quite confident by end of this year, we will uh, reach better than what it was last year. And uh, as we've been indicating, uh, um, it will be in the uh, 70s. Got it. My second question is with regards to the other income. Now, other income continues to be elevated on the back of uh, your IPO proceeds being unutilized. So uh, how do we see this evolving over the, over the, over the current fiscal? Uh, the utilization of funds and uh, how do we see the other income uh, panning out over the next couple of quarters? Yeah, so I think it is like this. See, obviously we had uh, objects specified for the uh, this thing, right? QIP. So uh, since the approval uh, was pending and now it's about to happen to this year, obviously we will utilize a lot of CapEx and so on. This CapEx is planned over two to three year time frame. To that extent, the proportionately we will consume this CapEx and obviously these, these and all these things will get converted into uh, equipment. So from that perspective, your other income, but anyway, the EBITDA that we uh, talk about, operational EBITDA is excluding the other income, the 13.3%. Just, uh, just wanted to bring that to your notice. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll get back in with you. Thank you, Abhijji. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sonali Falgaukar from Jeffers. Please go ahead. Uh, so good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity. Congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, so my first question is regarding your capex guidance. Is there any change uh, to that? Uh, 
Yeah, so I, as we had declared earlier, so we have new capexes, one in the OSAP business, the other in the CC board business. So it remains exactly similar to what we had planned earlier. Uh, it is just that the implementation uh, timeline got delayed by a couple of months because of the election and election results and all that. Otherwise, the CAPEX plan exactly remains the same because there are a lot of backwards to be done before we can make any changes. So, so these are the two priority projects with us. One is OSAD, the other one is the PC board project. And obviously, we, we still have some small amount left in the IPO proceed to complete our uh, um, CAPEX uh, implementation in Chamaraj Nagar and Mysore and Manasar plants. Understood. So my second question is on OSAT. I understand that you are awaiting the final approvals from the government side. But uh, when you start uh, the operations, what kind of revenues slash EBITDA incremental to your core business do you expect from FI26? Yeah, so see, all, all I can tell you at this point in time is it will be margin accretive to the existing business. Now exactly what uh, will depend on uh, exactly what orders we receive. And though we have broad MOUs to four customers and so on and so forth, we still have to show them a plan before they can assign a particular product category to us. So more details uh, shortly. Maybe you have to give us a couple of quarters more when we start doing the POC. So at that point in time, we can more. But all I can say is it will be marginalized eventually uh, uh, for compared to the EMS business. So in any sense on the incremental revenues? Incremental revenues typically in this business, uh, the asset turnover is about one to one point, uh, let's say two or one, in the best case scenario, one point three or so. So, depending on the capexes and the uh, uh, increase in the capacity utilization, uh, we can compute that. And uh, let's say FI 30 may, we would have done all of this three uh, thousand crores of capex in OSAC. So, we should definitely have revenues in excess of three thousand crores, uh, maybe twenty percent more than that, you know. Uh, Maybe 3,500 crores by 530. Understood. Sir. And we so that's all. Yeah. Sure. Thank that's you. all from Sonali. my side. Thank you. Thank you, Sonali. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Kaushik Mohan from Ashika Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good um, morning. Sir, I just wanted to understand your know, OSIC business. In one of the interviews, I think uh, one of your managers uh, told that uh, uh, in coming days, like we can see a separate listing for OSAC. And can I understand on the broader terms how large this OSAC business can be and how are we geared up for entire thing? Hi, Kaushik uh, Nice uh, hearing your voice. Uh, see, the uh, thing is, as a company, we have not decided about any listing status. So we, our stand is very simple. King Technology is the holding company and all other subsidiaries. Uh, results get consolidated into it. As far as business is concerned, this OSAC business takes anywhere between two to five years for it to start yielding the 80% capacity utilizations and so on. So like I said, our OSAC uh, uh, capex is about 3,000 crores. So by FI30, we can expect about 3,500 crores revenue in this. And uh, um, my estimate is that the margins should be better than our existing business. Uh, but exactly what uh, depends on what kind of products we onboard, and that would depend on uh, uh, customers' decision as to what range of products they want to do with us. But our target is that 25% of business will be in legacy area, legacy uh, semicon assembly area. 75% business we want to do in the advanced packaging area. So it looks like uh, uh, this target is achievable. But the only thing is we got to give it time for implementation of the first uh, uh, POC line and then do the other. Uh, uh, to, uh, approval from customers and so on and so forth. Okay. Thanks, sir. And, sir, one my second question follows is on uh, we have spoken about uh, catching $1 billion on uh, uh, top line by FY28 as a target. So, do we have any uh, contribution of OSAC in these numbers or this is a separate number? No, no, this is consolidated number. $1 billion is including OSAC and PC board. Okay. So, approximately what can be the OSAC contribution in this? Uh, any backup calculation? Uh, so, this is just an estimate at this point in time. Like I said, in OSAC, it depends on. Uh, we definitely will do consolidated 1 billion, which is like um, anywhere between 8,500 to 9,000 crores kind of number, depending on what the uh, exchange rate is likely to be at that point in time. 
Um, I would say bulk of the sales will be from the EMS uh, business only. So it can be uh, close to about 70-75% uh, will be uh, EMS business at the minimum, and the remaining will be new businesses like GoFat and uh, uh, PC board. Got it. And uh, how about our uh, capacity utilizations in the current uh, plant, sir? So the capacity utilization typically uh, goes through a cycle of uh, low, let's say 40-50% and then it goes peaks at about 80-90% when we onboard capacity. So currently uh, with the new plant coming up in Hyderabad, uh, so we will have uh, probably capacity utilization reasonably under control. But by the end of the year, we think uh, we will reach more like 80-90% capacity, capacity utilization. Uh, uh, maybe 70-80% to and then now of course first quarter, we have to augment capacity. The Chamaraj Nagar facilities, uh, uh, Gama building will come up. We are also having plants in Pune and uh, uh, up north in uh, Jammu. So those capacities will also fire up. So hopefully uh, we will be able to manage this. So end of the year, we will have maybe 70% utilization. Uh, and then of course, we will have to add uh, fresh capacities to cater to the additional business for the next year. And sir, uh, how about our uh, uh, smart meter business? How how big is this opportunity? Because uh, now I see that uh, government is very cautious on uh, not losing the electricity. And also there are a lot of reports uh, telling that the focus is going on to hydrogen uh, hydrogen side to create electricity and uh, different forms of electricity. Like if it might be rooftop, uh, rooftop uh, solar or it might be uh, wind energy or anything. So and uh, smart meters plays a very big vital role on this play. So I just can I understand uh, where are we getting the clients and what is this entire division will look like? See, in the smart meter space, uh, broadly out of 250 million uh, units that were uh, planned to be implemented, about 10 million units have been already implemented. So it's a very large, uh, let's say, use case that has been done. And of course, there were a few queries uh, here and there, some users said no, etc. Obviously, when you put one crore meter, there will be at least a few thousands of people who will uh, protest, etc. But uh, broadly, uh, the information from our customers is that uh, this entire thing is working, system is working, and so another 240 million meters at the minimum will be there. Then, of course, we we are also uh, it's a similar technology, so we do have access to customers who would be also looking at other uh, metering, um, whether it's water, whether it's uh, gas, and so on and so forth. So it's an exciting area. So with a good, uh, let's say. Uh, a business horizon for next at least the five to ten years time frame, you know. So two forty million, you can put uh, uh, roughly whatever is the kind of price of a meter, anywhere between two to five thousand uh, rupees, uh, depending on the single phase or three phase, etc. So it's a, it's a large amount of business that is coming in, and with the government talking on with their plan, we uh, are promoting only India designed, India made uh, products, and there is also a good uh, uh, export. Uh, possibilities in this area. So how much money are we locking up for this business in our balance sheet? See, we, this is an EMS kind of uh, this thing. Obviously, there's an additional capex for plastics, etc., but nothing significant. This also has an asset terms of anywhere between 6 to 8, and maybe nearer to 8, because this will be a product-focused uh, activity. So it's a very, uh, it, it is uh, probably less asset intensive than our existing business itself. Got it. So how about the competition? Because the competition is also very strong in this business, right? Uh, is it sustainable with that uh, internal targets of 15% margin that we speak about? Yes, sir. So, so two of the best service uh, solution and service providers are our customers in this area. So we think that we will have a significant and uh, steady market share. So these are two uh, solution providers uh, across the world. They are global players who are working in India. So we are confident that at least um, to the extent that we do the business, it will be a stable business. Oh, sure. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. I'll get back in the queue. It was helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Indrajit Agrawal from CLSA. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity. A couple of questions. First, on the uh, subsidy on OSAT, right? so I just want to understand how does it work? Is it like the government spends like for like, or you spend majority of the in the government then reimburses at a later date? Yeah, so there are two subsidies in OSAT. So one is central government subsidy, 
the second is state government subsidy both are in the nature of cash subsidy they are not in kind okay that's the first thing the second thing is both are uh, linked to a certain class of let's say total class of investment it is the land is excluded from it land we get a special subsidy separately from the state government if you are approved of that land they give us 50% off on the land as far as the remaining capex is concerned that is the total capex minus the land they give us uh, central government gives us 50% subsidy the 50% subsidy is uh, issued on a pari pass basis uh, that would mean that the moment company invests let's say x amount of rupees the government also provides the same amount of rupees and this can be then used to purchase uh, capex so this is pari pass as far as state government is concerned uh, similar method works but the only thing is they await the uh, commencement of operation that means we should mean that we achieve the first or first couple of lines have to be operational and the company has to start doing some invoicing so we have taken a period of two years for this purpose like let's say fy 26 but we are confident that much before that we will probably start doing it so we start enjoying the state government subsidy state government subsidy is anywhere between 20 and 25 percent of the total capex and this is contingent on getting approval from the central government subsidy sure. and there is no tax implication of this right so this is all uh, independent of the tax also there is no implication of this of government subsidy no there is no implication of tax in this sure. the only the only thing is that they want us to work for a period of five years make sure that the assets are productive and we start doing business and we onboard some good technology which in the government can talk about and so on so they, they have been actually very supportive in this and helping us uh, they are also giving us some contacts etc to No, improve our program. Sure, this is helpful. And second question is on coverage. So, uh, understand the proof of concept is still to be done, but ultimately your contract will not be with the government. So, it will be with an entity where who will have a contract and you will have a subcontractor. Is that correct? Or you can direct your contract to the government? Yeah. So, while we have not worked out the actual modality, but typically all railway contracts, you know, they say. Uh, development and manufacturing okay they don't really so uh, the key key to supply to somebody like railway is approval from their side so what we are doing is we are working with the technology provider and making a uh, cost effective solution for coverage and getting it approved by rdso there are two options there one of course uh, we can directly supply or the other is uh, through other oem uh, we have all the key oems already working with us and the third option is somebody else's product design also we can manufacture so we do have uh, rsps in all the three areas so maybe uh, the first step for us is to demonstrate that we have a product product which we will do like ramesh is saying is opening the mark we will do probably by the end of this year or early next year and uske baad then we will do this uh, uh, business split between these three different methods you know so are your existing radio contract So, the customers are the same as the coverage customers, or there will be different set of customers or the volume. They, they will be similar, sir. They will be similar because see, see the, the railway ecosystem is such that uh, the tenders are picked up by uh, implementation contractors who have trained staff, so they align with one of the big major OEMs, you know, in signaling system. And these are very same people who will actually implement probably the coverage program also. So, it will be the same ecosystem. Sure. Thank you. This is helpful. That's all from my side and all the rest. Thank you. Thank you so much, Indranji. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Karan Sanwal from Nivishesh. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, wanted to understand, like, uh, uh, from the products that we manufacture, uh, what would be the major components? uh in terms of you know percentage value which is sourced from the domestic uh, market uh, currently like buyer pcb transformers registers if you could highlight the major components uh, uh, so you are talking about currently you are talking about our existing ems business correct yes yes ha so basically in existing the ems business is uh, roughly uh, 60% of the entire uh, um materials are generally imported 40% is locally manufactured okay uh, and what will be the major components in those 40% uh, which are domestically sourced hello
Hello. Make sure the line from the management has been disconnected. Oh, okay. Okay. Can you uh, please? Uh, uh, are we audible now? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, Karanji, what I was. Where did we get dropped? No, no, I will repeat. Okay. Yeah, so he was asking about the import uh, from the EMS business, and I was explaining the. Some of the things like PC boards will get indigenized, and some of the OSAT also will probably source will become India, but again continue to be imported because it will go to the global supply chain, uh, which are also outside of India. And uh, so, yeah, so roughly about 60% is imported. Uh, out of that, uh, maybe 10% uh, of sales uh, will probably get indigenized into India, and the remaining 50 will continue to be imported from outside of India. Okay, okay. Um, and also, um, uh, if you could um, uh, state the gross debt level and the average interest cost uh, for the uh, as on date. Uh, I didn't get your question, sir. Can you just repeat it slowly? Uh, yeah, I was asking for gross debt level and the average interest cost. Oh, okay, gross debt level. So uh, this is a like I said, uh, this is a temporary thing. Uh, we do have little bit of increase in inventories and also. Couple of customers, uh, there was a delay in payments, but uh, we have now figured out how to get that uh, organized. So going forward, that will come down. Okay, okay. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Karanji. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rajesh Vora from Jainman Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, congrats on uh, strong the first quarter. One may see the U.S. $1 billion revenue aspirational target being nearer. When are we expecting that to hit? Yeah, Rajiv thank you for joining this call, especially on a Saturday. Uh, <laughs> so this $1 billion is our aspirational target as our effectivity is, sir. And uh, like I said, I was explaining, the 75%, 75%, 80% will be our existing EMS business. The building will be augmented by new businesses in OSAT as well as the PC board area. And that level, uh, Jairam, uh, it would be, market would be higher than where we are today. Right? Because as you stated, uh, OSAT and PCB will have higher margin. Yes, sir. By, by that point, uh, we would have probably worked on the high density interconnection boards and also the advanced packaging. So we are expecting the new businesses to be value accretive. Uh, and margin equity also. Um, so you are right. It, it will be uh, the total uh, consolidated numbers so should have higher uh, margins than just the EMS business. Right. And uh, my second question is: I remember having uh, discussing with you and Ramesh about Benahar Corp, uh, which is uh, I believe one of the customers. And uh, it is a very good uh, uh, basket of products on the medical devices side. Uh, and they have done very well over the years on acquisition side as well. So are we, are we uh, regulating anything from that company? Or any other EMS? Sir, sir you, you asked about whether we are getting some business from this uh, medical uh, devices company that we have uh, on the as a client, is that the question, sir? No, no, I'm saying Benahar Corp. Is that oh, one of yeah. your clients? Yeah, ha, ha. Is our client. yeah, one of their subsidiaries is a client of ours. And uh, yes, we, we, we are seeing some little uptake in this, but uh, too early to declare victory, sir. But uh, yeah, uh, we are qualified by the Benahar Group company. So as and when their uh, outsourcing spend increases, uh, we, we will be the beneficiaries. 
Yeah, and my second part of the question, uh, Jairamji, was about do we, do we, I mean, have you, uh, are we benchmarking our company on any other global EMS or companies like Benahar or something like that uh, we should be talking about? Yes, sir. So in terms of benchmarking, sir, we, we have an internal process of what we call best in class. That means in terms of product portfolio, we should be like uh, uh, somebody like a, uh, without prejudice, I would say somebody like a Plexus Corporation, right? They have very cool products, full uh, built products they make, etc. In terms of margins, we should be like some of the smaller organizations which do EMS across the world in aerospace and all that. These are high margin and uh, protected markets. When I say protected markets, they are niche players who so are very difficult to replace. They have developed intrinsic technology. So we conceive us to be an integrated EMS player with uh, doing some technology uh, high-tech products, uh, doing complete value chain for the customer, which would include, of course, block build. And in certain uh, set of our customers, we'd like to do the, uh, what you call the silic uh, silicon assembly also through our OSAC. And we'd also like to do the PC board, which is especially the identity PC board, so that uh, we become a preferred uh, supplier of people seeking highly complex and highly technology-oriented products, which uh, we believe that the entire electronic assembly is moving in the direction. So in future, you would see two different types of electronics. One will be this commercial electronic. That will also be high-tech, so that will be high volume. We may not be getting there, uh, the commercial and consumer kind of thing. The other is industrial type of thing, which will be high-tech. So we think that we will be a good uh, supplier of this high-tech, and the volumes may not be necessarily high, but they'll be all complex and uh, critical uh, products with new generation of uh, you know, silicon, et cetera, where in some cases we'll get some uh, opportunity for silicon assembly also. Uh, lovely. Makes sense, uh, Jairamji. Uh, thank you very much and wish you all the very best for a billion dollar target. Thank you. Th thank you, Rajivji. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Nikhil Kale from Invesco. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Congrats on a very good set of numbers. Uh, so, uh, Jairam, the first question was on the PCB uh, business. Uh, so, like you highlighted on the OSAC, we are looking at maybe like a 3500 odd crore kind of a target for FI30. Uh, what could be the potential top line that we can achieve on the PCB bearable business? Uh, if you can just maybe talk about that. Yeah, yeah, no, thank, you. thank you for this question. So the PC board, uh, originally we said phase one may we'll do about 730 crores, but we are now uh, working with state governments to um, get a little higher subsidy too. So eventually by FI30, I think we would probably have a capex of about 14, uh, excess of 1,100 to 1,400 crores. So uh, here also you can expect a top line of anywhere between, uh, depending on capacity utilization, it's anywhere between 1,000 to 1,500 crores by FI30. So this will be roughly a 40% of the business of OSAD itself. OSAD will be, let's say, anywhere between 3,000 to 3,500 crores. This will be about 1,000 uh, to 1,500 crores. By FI30. Okay. Got it, got it. So by FI30, broadly, 4,500, 5,000 odd crores on the new businesses. And uh, safe to say that the tax margins on these businesses would be similar, maybe similar, would be better than the legacy. Yeah, it, yeah it, it, it will be higher than our invest business, yeah. Got it. And just a second question was on the order book. Uh, I think at the start of the call, you mentioned that uh, there are some new orders that you've got where the execution time frame is slightly higher. You talked about a 10% kind of a number. So just wanted to cl uh, clarify this. So out of 5,000 odd crore, broadly maybe 500, 600 odd crore is something which will get executed over two years and the remaining will get executed over the next 12 to 15 months. Is this understanding correct? Uh, not really. What I'm saying is, I was talking about the orders added. So I was trying to explain the sudden increase. I think the question was sudden increase in the order inflow. So what, what does it mean? Does it mean that this, this year will do beyond 3,000? I was trying to explain that those order inflows are pertaining to some institutions that are not in this year. But broadly, 60 to 70 percent of the order book gets typically executed in the year. So you can take anywhere, let's say 5,000 crore is the order book at the end of June. So 70 percent of that is. 60% of that is about 3,000. We already run 500. So, so obviously we we have good coverage. In fact, there will be a challenge in terms of actually completing the entire thing because of capacity and all related things. You know? So roughly mm -hmm. about 60% at any given point in time for, for the next uh, 60 to 70% for the next 12 months 
kind of time frame so yeah so obviously uh, most of the orders that we do this year are already there with us some uh, customers will be six months to a year order they will keep coming in and uh, yeah so we will uh, try and make sure that we uh, satisfy the customers with this possible extent okay got it and just last question on the working capital cycle i think in the past we have spoken about that uh, we are in discussions with our vendors to maybe set up uh, warehouses uh, in india or maybe to suppliers from local kind of uh, regions so any any progress on that because i mean the way the order book has been ramping up will uh, constantly be in this phase wherein we'll have to kind of order more inventory for our future orders so then how do you kind of look at working capital kind of coming down so these these initiatives will be important right yeah so the near shoring of inventory is one activity we couldn't do too much progress last three quarters last three months because i think everybody is watching the budget and you know provisions for providing some benefit in that area we expect that another couple of months and government will also initiate some policies policies on logistics so it will make it easier for people to near shore inventory on the other hand just based on our own screen we have got positive response from most of the suppliers so we will try and do something that this year Uh, where the locally people keep some stock for us uh, to relieve some of the burden. So we are working in the direction. Um, uh, more on it maybe in, by quarter three or so. Uh, the remaining improvements that we do in the uh, this thing will be based on uh, efficiency improvements and um, also uh, making sure the shortages are not there and so on. And also working in factoring uh, agencies for you know uh, making sure that uh, the fuels are under control. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question for the day. I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Go ahead. Uh, so, are there any more questions? Uh, no, last question. It's complete. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much uh, for attending this uh, you, on a Saturday. Uh, we appreciate the interest shown. Uh, probably one of the best attendance on a holiday for a earnings call. Thank and you. next time round, we'll keep it on a working day so that we don't inconvenience you too much. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect.